praise lord we thank you this morning we bless your name sweet as name in mother tongue sweet as note on Sarah's song sweet as carol ever song Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now listen, somebody came up on the altar and said, the two fallopian tools were all, and the miracle workers, they gave a miracle. That God is worthy to be praised. If that is all you hear in this service, it's enough. Because every miracle, every testimony has the power to reproduce itself. I'd like you to lift up your hands. Let's worship the great physician. The great physician now is near. The sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the just worship you this morning we magnify you Lord Neligwe Ipwe Zemo
Which you have done. It's not unto us, O Lord. It's unto you that we give all the glory. The miracle worker. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name. Why not welcome somebody to church to the left and right with a smile? Say to him, You're welcome. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I want you to celebrate. from the apostle over this commission Bishop David Oyedepo <laughs> Hallelujah and I'm sure that the blessings of the father they are already evident in this church and in greater dimensions you will see in Jesus name I don't know who I'm talking to this morning but I heard the voice of the Lord saying to me he said you may have gone through the waters you may have gone through the fire but you are coming out to your wealthy places. You are coming out to your wealthy places. You are coming out to your wealthy places. He said, this is the blessing of the Lord upon Judah. He said, let his hands be sufficient for him. Lift up your hand. The works of these hands shall be sufficient for you. The work of your hand shall not be rejected. The works of your hand shall not be rejected. The works of your hand shall not be rejected. It shall bring you to great blessings. In the name of Jesus. He said the Lord bless Judah. The Lord bring him to his inheritance. But above all, he said let the works of his hands be sufficient that's Deuteronomy 33 verse 7. He said, let the works of his hands be sufficient for him. When we are talking about business, we are talking about the works of your hand. And when the works of your hand is sufficient for you, you will prosper exceedingly. You do what? You prosper exceedingly. Now very quickly before we go into that, We'd like to quickly tidy up our teaching series on the subject of accessing God's plan for your life from his book. Now the Bible, let me begin to say, is the most authentic book on the earth. Hallelujah. The most what? Authentic book. In fact, it is the forever book. The what? Forever book. Not just the, for only, the forever book. Is the most current book on the earth. All other books have come and gone. But forever, oh Lord, 
thy word is settled. And it is that settled word that settles the issues of men's life. What it takes to settle your life is untamed in his word. The day you find the word, that is the day you walk in dominion. The Bible says Jesus found where it was written concerning him. And he announced to the people that heard. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Praise the Lord. God has a plan for your life. Now, that plan is not in the hand of your father, sir. Hello? That hand plan is not in the hand of your mother. It's not. God's plan for your life is not in the hands of any man. It's in his book. Say in his book. Because if it were to be in the hand of a man, <laughs> you will see Pepe. You know, there's a song we used to sing. I never knew he would honor me this way. I never knew he would honor me this way. I never knew he would honor me this way. Honor me this way. Thank you, Jesus. If it were to be mad, I will shall it be. He will show me Pepe. To, to be mad, I will really pay. If it were to be mad, I will show you. If it were to be mad, I will surely pay. The plan is not in the hand of a man. That is why no man has the final say over your life. I like that. The psalmist said in Psalm 3, you begin to read from verse 1. He said, many have said there is no help for me in God. He said, but thou, O oh Lord, you are a shield from He began by saying, they are increased. Can I talk to you this morning? He said, O oh Lord, verse 1, he said, O oh Lord, they are increased that trouble me. Can I tell you, enemies are on the increase, sir. It is French that are reducing. Enemies are what? Don't deceive yourself. Oh. <laughs> Is somebody in this church? Enemies are on the increase. But true friends, they are on the decrease. So David was right to say, Oh Lord, how are they increased that troubled me? And because of their increase, they have said, there is no help for this man in God. He won't make it. He said, but thou, O oh Lord, you are a shield for me. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. They may not like my face. I will rule over them. Is somebody in this church this morning? They don't have to like my face. This man is born to reign. Look at yourself. See, I'm born to reign. They don't have to like me. Say, they don't have to like me. I will rule over them. That is the purpose of God for your life. You are born to do what? To reign. He has made us kings and priests unto our God. And we shall reign. We shall do what? We shall do what? Reign. We are on the heads. Hallelujah. Tell somebody this head will wear the crown. That's the truth. Listen to me, precious people of God. No man has the final say over your life. There's a man in the scripture, the Bible called his name Jephthah. No man can determine your bus stop. They may put a comma in your life, but that is not. I feel something. That comma is not the bus stop. Say it's not the bus. Say it's not the bus stop. 
It's not the bus stop. Men may put comma on your way. But the comma is not the word bus stop. Because after this, there shall be a feast. You didn't hear me. After this, there shall be what? A feast. A feast. Tell somebody a feast. A feast of good things. Judges chapter 11. The Bible is speaking about the man Jephthah. You begin to read from verse 1 down to verse 7. The Bible said he was born of a king. He was the son of a king. A priest as it were. But his father's children said to Jephthah, you will not have inheritance with us. Because your mother was a prostitute. You won't define, defy the lineage of the king. And the Bible said they trust him out. They cast him away. Listen, they may cast you away. You are not the first, sir. You are what? You are not the first. You may have been rejected by your family member. You are not a yard. Hey, they will soon come and celebrate you. They will soon come and celebrate you. They will send for you. They will send for Listen to me. By the apostolic grace over this commission, the one I came to represent, as the Lord liveth, as the Lord liveth, as the Lord liveth, they will send for you. They will send for you. They will send for you. Take your seat. Jephthah was cast out. But the same man, <laughs> they sent for him. They said, Jephthah, come, there is war now. And we can't fight this enemy. We need you. So I am needed. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Say, I am needed. I am what? Needed. I mean needed. Needed. I am what? Needed. They sent for Jephthah. They said, Jephthah, come and help us. The same man that trusted him, the same people went for him. Lift up your hands. Labradia Katanosizia. Where they have rejected you, they will send for you. Honor will come your way. Honor will come your way. You are born to be great. Don't mind them all. You are born to be great. Say, I'm born to be great. Take your seat. Hallelujah. But the beautiful thing about Jephthah in chapter 12, you begin to read verse 3. Jephthah said, I took my life in my hand. I did what? That is, I accepted responsibilities. Until you come to a place where you accept responsibilities and say, God, I know you have a purpose for my life. What is it? I know you have a plan for my life. What is it? Until you come to a place of discoveries, you are never distinguished. It is the things that you discover that makes for you being distinguished. It is discovery before being distinguished. Are you following what I'm saying this morning? You come to a place where you say, Lord, what is it? Now listen, listen. One of the things that makes for discovery of divine plans is asking yourself sincere question. Hello, sir. Hello. Ask yourself what? Sincere question. Is this all that is life to be? Is this all that life entails? Genesis chapter 30 verse 30. The man Jacob there one day, he said, listen, I've been slaving and slaving. He said, when shall I prepare for my own? When shall I provide for my own house? Question. Say question. 
If you don't know how to ask sincere questions from God, your life will become a question mark among men. He sat down. He said, when shall I live a life that matters? When shall I live a mark in the sand of time? When shall I be sung even when I'm gone? He was asking questions. You see, the problem with believers is that they live life on assumptions. No, sir. He doesn't operate at that way, at that frequency. It is question. It is what? Question. Don't watch your life waste away. Because you are much more than this. Oh. Hello, sir. You are much more than this. Can I talk to you this morning? You are much more than the man I'm looking at. You are much more than the woman I'm looking at. You are much more than the young man I'm looking at. You are much more than the young lady I'm looking at. Don't live like Methuselah and die like Jehoram. All the story around Methuselah was that he lived, he begat, and he died. 969 years Methuselah lived. There was nothing accredited to his name than he lived, he begat, and he died. Say, God forbid. God forbid. Don't live like Methuselah and end your journey like Jehoram. When I saw the story of the man Jehoram in the Bible, from that day, you see, discovery makes for you being distinguished. I took a vow and I made up my mind I won't end my journey as a common man. Listen, my background is not enough to put my back on the ground. Nobody may have succeeded in my family. I will break the record. Nobody may have achieved anything in my lineage minus me. Because I'm born to be a savior. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me read to you the account of this man, Jehoram. Even though he was a king. Turn your Bibles with me very quickly. Second Chronicles now. Verse 21. Chapter 21. Second Chronicles chapter 21. Studio put that scripture on the board. Verse 9. Second Chronicles 21. Verse 9. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes. And all his chariots with him. And rose up by night and smote the Edomite, which compassed him in the cap and the captains of the chariot. That tells you something about Jehoram that he was a king. He was what? A king. But look at how he ended his life. Turn your Bibles to verse 20. Studio verse 20. 30. Now let's read the entire church. I want you to see it for yourself. Shall we go? One, two. Now take note of two words. He departed without being what? Desire. Say God forbid. King Fa. He departed. He died without being mourned. He departed without being desired. And not just that. The Bible says they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchre of what? Even though he was what? Say God, for, do like this. He departed without being desired. He was buried in the city of David, but not among the king. Even though he was a what? Man that is in honor and understanding it not is like the beast of the field that perishes. 
Say, I am born for exploits. That is one of the things the word of God says about you. You are redeemed for what? Exploits. You are redeemed for what? Exploits. And I saw also in the scripture, a man who was not a king. He was a priest. When he died, the entire nation mourned for him. They buried him in the city of David and among the kings. That was Jehoiada the priest. They called that man's name Jehoiada the priest. So you turn your back. Go there now very quickly. Second Chronicles 24. Second Chronicles 24. Verse 15 down to 16. Say, I am redeemed for exploits. I won't die a commoner. Second Chronicles 24. Verse 15. Studio, are you there? But Jehoiada waxed old. Are we together? And was full of days when he died. And 130 years old was he when he died. Go ahead. And they buried him where? Among what? Man, Jehoiada was a priest. He died. They buried him in the city of David among the kings. I will not die small. You know why? You are redeemed for exploit. The Bible said they did that because of the good that he did. That is exploit. Uncommon result. Uncommon achievements. Oh. You shall be great. Yeah. I wish you can enter into my heart and feel what I'm feeling. That's the truth. Jehoiada was now, you can say he was an ordinary man. Are you following what I'm saying? He was a church worker. He was just an ordinary man. But when he died, they gave him a state barrier. But there was a king, a president of a nation that died, that nobody mourned for him, and that he departed without being desired. What makes the difference? Exploit. Say exploit. Say exploit. The Bible says, for the good, the good, the good, the good. Outstanding result, outstanding achievement gave him a place. Are you following what I'm saying? You are not a common now. You see, that's why I don't like all this. Uh, we, 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 the masses. I'm not among the masses. No, I'm not a masses. Can I talk? I know there are labor union people here. Don't, don't. I will tell you this one. I will go to my station. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We the masses. No! I'm not among the masses. I'm not. I'm not. Have you ever seen the son of the governor doing riot, running around town? Not saying masses. Among people, there are people. There are what? Look, say, I am different, oh. You, because you are redeemed for exploit. You are redeemed a man of uncommon result. A man of uncommon achievements. That is who you are redeemed to be. You are not in the ordinary class. You are a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Hello, sir. My light will shine. My star will shine. And you can't do anything about it. Are you following what I'm saying? I told them many years ago, many, many years ago, I was preaching in one of the churches I passed. I said, do you see this face? They said, yes. I said, you will see this face across the nations of the earth. 
Are you following what I'm And you will say, I remember pastor says this. A few years ago, uh, since 2014, God has given me the opportunity to travel out of the country on a regular basis. And when I go, I preach that they put on YouTube. And people say, they say, hey, Pastor, we saw you. I say, it is true. Because you will see this face across the face of the... I'm not born to be a local champion. No! Look at whatever you are doing. You announce to... Look, you may not look like it now, but announce it. Do what? Announce it. Do what? Announce it. Tell the people whether they win their nose is not, it doesn't matter. That, they, <laughs> that this man, you have not heard the last of him. Oh, because another chapter is about to open. Can I prophesy to you? Whatever men have said you are excluded from, as the Lord liveth, before the year is over, that same thing shall be included in your testimony. Whatever men have excluded your name from, they say, I forget you. No, 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 no. It's not for people like him. That same thing shall be included in your testimonies because you are redeemed for exploits for what say that is who i am he has redeemed us unto our god prince and kings and we shall reign on the earth you are redeemed for ever exploit you are a city that is said, not a house. A what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can I talk to you this morning? Your father may not have built any house. Maybe the house he has is even a mud house. But as the Lord liveth, you will build a state. You will build a state. You will build a state. Sort that I have, sort that I carry, sort that I've been made particular thereof, I release to you whatever is the limitation of your ancestors. You will break forth in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. You are unlimited. I am what? Unlimited. Listen, as long as you keep seeing, because he said to Abraham, Genesis chapter 13, you begin to read from verse 13 to 14. As far as you can see, as long as you keep seeing, as long as you keep seeing, as long as you keep seeing, you are unlimited. So tell somebody, see something. Tell him, see greatness. See greatness. Tell him, see greatness. see greatness. Can I tell you to stand up? I'd like you to walk like this. Walk like a great man. Are you following what I'm saying? See greatness. I shall be great. Take your seat. I want you to be conscious of greatness. Hello? I want you to be conscious of what? Greatness. Because that is what you are redeemed to be. As a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. It is not so much the devil that limits you. Your limitation is your mind. It's your word. Say I shall be great. Do like this. I shall be great. In fact you will congratulate my testimony. Hey, listen to me. You will be there to clap for me and to dance my dance. You see, very soon, you will sing my song with me. And you will dance my dance with me like this. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? You will sing my song with me. And you will dance my dance. Because this man, Olumiwa Emmanuel, you shall be great. You have not seen anything yet, oh. You have not seen anything. You have not seen anything. I want you to carry it. You see, the problem of many believers is their mind. That's why the Bible says, Be ye transformed. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are as great as you think you are. Hello. I walked into a place majestically. They say, um, I guess you are a pastor. I say, yes, I am. Are you following what I'm saying? I didn't go there doing shabu, 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 shabu. Mm -mm. <laughs> I walk with all majesty, very relaxed. Very what? No, listen, you better watch those who are ahead of you. I've been around God's servant Bishop B for some time now. You see him walk with confidence. You see God's servant the Bishop walk with confidence. What kind of dangerous confidence you can't explain? You may not have that degree of confidence, but copy their work like this and just... understand what I'm saying? Because the way you are dressed, that's how they will address you. Sit down. I shall be great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Somebody says, can we help you? I say, can I help you? Because you are the one that needs my help. Are you, look, I want you to carry a confidence because that is one of the discoveries in the word of God. Matthew chapter 5. Telling us that we are redeemed for exploit. Where a city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. We are meant to be the salt of the earth. Come on, like, can I talk to you? I may not have the volume of money you have now. But I'm not inferior to you. I have something you don't have. <laughs> Hello? I may not have the size of your bank account, but I have something. And I am not inferior to you. And I also have something that you don't have. As it is. So don't carry an inferiority mentality. Are you following what I'm saying? What makes people inferior is knowledge. Job said, I'm not inferior to any one of you that is counseling me today because what you know, I also know. That's the place of knowledge. Are you following what I'm saying? See yourself in the light of who God says you are. You are redeemed for exploits. And I'll quickly tell, to you, tell you the secret of exploit in life. Number one. Number one is good understanding. Good understanding. Hmm. Good understanding. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15. Proverbs 16 22. The Bible says, Good understanding give it favor. No. 1622. Proverbs 1622 now. He says, understanding. Look at that scripture. He says, it's a well that spring life. Separate the two words, well spring. Understanding is a well that spring life to those that have it. So as long as you have understanding of who God says you are, what God says you are, life will keep generating and be flowing for you. And that is what makes the part of the just man to be like a shining light. He says, good understanding give it favor. But in 1622, he said, understanding is a way. It's a way that springs life. Understanding doesn't spring death. It is what you don't know that brings about death. But understanding springs what? Life. There is no devil that can stop it. 
And I saw in the scripture that a man of understanding will always be taken. Will always be what? That means he will always stand out. He will always stand out. A man of understanding. Behind exploit is understanding. Is somebody here? Praise the Lord. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13 very quickly. And let's read that verse of the scripture together. One, two, shall we go? Now keep that scripture there. Let's interpret. Take you who? And what? And I will make them what? It is only men of understanding that rules. They are always taking. They are always what? I mean, they just stand out. They just stand out. He said, take unto you wise men and understanding. That is, men of understanding will always be taken. When, they, when you stand in the crowd, a man of understanding will always stand out. Even though you are in the crowd, you can't be lost in the crowd. When you are a man of understanding, they will say there is something different about this man. Hello, sir. That is what understanding does. He says, and I will make them rulers. So wherever you find yourself, whether at the place of work, understand the details of your work. Hello? Understand the details of your... Know your job. Say, know your job. I was somewhere out of the country some last year on a mission inspection. And I called the admin officer of the nation. And I said, um, I was asking for a particular document, what about this, what about this? He said, it's not with him. He's with the pastor, former pastor. I said, why? He said, he needed, I said, where is your own copy? He said, I don't have. I said, what is your job description? He started stammering. I said, if I sack you now, when they say this pastor who came is the devil, I said, you don't know your job, so you are not needed, you are sacked. You are what? If you don't know your job, you are not needed. You can't add value to a system you don't know what the system is about. It is only value adding men that will always be celebrated. Can I talk to you? It is not age that makes for honor. It is value addition. It's what? I say, but by the mercy of God, I leave you. He so said that the only thing when they came, he sacked me. But go and know your job. Go and know your what? Your job. Are you following what I'm saying? Know the details of your work. It will make you to stand. Many people, are, many, listen, it's not just the oil that makes you to be outstanding. If there's nothing inside the anointing, the oil will not work. The oil will not do what? So sit down. And understand the details of what you are doing in life. What is this thing about? I saw the Bible. In the Bible, the Bible talks about Nimrod. Nimrod was an hunter. But the Bible says Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. It's not your profession that defines your greatness. It is what you know about what you are doing, sir. I told them the other day, the driver of Mr. President is not a driver. He's an executive of the presidency. I hope you know that one. Many people queue for appointment three months to see the president, but the driver sees him every day. And they talk together like friends. Mohammed comes to carry a guy, he's looking somehow. Oh, guy says, Mohammed, may I faru? Uh, is that the way they say it? <laughs> he says, say, Mohammed, what is the matter? Mohammed says, My mother in the village, oh, she's nowhere. And so? Get a car to go and bring her. That means take a car from the presidency. Huh? To so go and bring the mother in the village. Is he a yeye car they will take? Why? Because Muhammad knows his job. Good understanding. Good word? Understand. Good word? Don't undo the issues of your life shabbily. 
give attention to the details of your work. That is when it will begin to work. Are you following what I'm saying? Wherever you have found that God has placed you, get the best, be the best. Make up your mind that among pastors, I will be the pastor. Among my equal, I will stand out. Start from somewhere. Are you following what I'm saying? Be value adding wherever you find yourself by reason of good understanding. And you will naturally stand out in life. Are you following what I'm saying? And one thing that good understanding does is that it procures to you favor. Favor covers your error. Favor does what? And colors your life as well. When a man is favor, even when you make me say, they say, oh no, he's not like that. He's a good man. Is, it, is, it, is that true? He said, no, no, he's not like that. Leave him, leave him, let him pass. Somebody, somebody else that has no good understanding that has not procured people, smart in it. That man is a devil. Move him now. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a man of exploit. Say, I am a man of exploit. I'm a man of good understanding. Another thing that makes for exploit is another spirit. Another word that is being courageous. Tell somebody be courageous. Look, there is no man of exploit without being courageous. And what is courage? Courage is taking step in the face of your fears. In the face of your word, there is no man that does not have fear. Hello. But when you begin to take step in the face of your fear, you become a man of courage. And that's when you begin to achieve result when others are hiding. First Samuel chapter 17. The Bible said Goliath was coming out every day for 40 days. He was harassing the children of Israel, the entire nation. He was defying the armies of the living God. And the moment Goliath comes out, the Bible says all the army, including Saul, they will run and hide. They will run and hide. But by chance, David came into the camp and David had Goliath for the first time. The first time David had Goliath, that was the last time he heard him talk. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? To defy the armies of the living God. And he began to ask, what shall be done to the man that killed this man? Because he's already a dead man. That is the language of the courageous. Sir Edmund Hillary, the man that climbed the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. He had tried several times and failed. Made effort and failed. You are not the first to fail, sir. So don't let that fail your tie you down. A lady came up to me. She said she failed... It says it six times. I said, have you failed it the second time, seventh time? She said, no, I said, go and write the second, seventh time. The Bible said, when you fail seven times, you can't fail again. He <laughs> said, seven times shall a righteous man. So after the seventh one, you can't fail. You can't fail again. Sir so Edmund looked at Mount Everest and stood before the mountain. After several of his colleagues that they tried to climb the mountain died. He kept preparing and kept failing. One day, he stood by the mountain. He said, Mount Everest, you have grown the tallest you can ever grow. You can't grow tall again, but I am still growing. Tell somebody I'm still growing. I'm still growing. Mount Everest, you, this is the highest you can ever grow. This is the highest height you can ever have. But as for me, I'm still growing. So I will overcome you. He climbed the mountain and stood at the top. That is courage. That is what? Don't let the past defeat, the memory of past defeat hold you captive. You can go beyond that point. You can go beyond what? You can go beyond that what? Every man of exploit is a man of courage. It's a man of courage. As you build your courage, how? One, you build courage by remembering testimonies. By remembering testimony, what God has done before. 
Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21. He said, This I recall to my mind. I have hope. As you remember the act of God in time past, your courage is built. You see, if God has done this before, he can do it again. David said, He said, The God that delivered me from the power of the lion and the bear. He said, That same God. Now listen. If God saw you through one challenge, he will see you through this one. So why do you think this challenge will kill you? Say, it can't kill me. Say, I refuse to die before my time. I just refuse to die. Because if God has seen you through one challenge, he will see you through this one again. Praise the Lord. Now let's quickly look at covenant of business. 15 minutes, we're done. What is business? What is business? Business is matching your gift with a problem. Business is matching your gift with what? A problem. When you begin to match your gift with a problem, you are in business. Because the problems you solve is what determines your profiting in life. Are you following what I'm saying? What is the problem? What gift do I have to solve this? When you begin to match the giftings of God in your life to the problems you see around you, you are in business. Profiting will come. Are you following what I'm saying? Profiting will come. Profiting will come. And driving business success. Listen, like I said in the first service, is the Holy Ghost. The who? The Holy Ghost. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to have an upper hand in life. If you want to have the upper hand in life, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. Beyond all other principles, get power. You want to have the upper hand in life, get power. Power. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. What will the Holy Ghost do to you? He will give you wisdom. He will give you what? Wisdom. What to do with what you are doing. The Holy Ghost will give you good understanding. He will give you direction. Are you following what I'm saying? Let me tell you what happened to me some years ago. Some years ago, um, 2008, right? This is 10 years now. Those were the days of um, stock market when shares were doing very well. Everybody was buying shares, they were making money. I'm not naturally inclined to things like that. But when people begin to say, ah, you don't have shares, so I took all the money, say all, gathered it like this, and went and bought shares and that day i was returning home i was very happy i was calculating i was going back to the office i was very happy i was calculating how the money would just be flowing how would <laughs> hey loser one week after stock market crashed my money lost value up to today i don't know whether i have share anywhere i don't bother myself whether they've eaten it mm, i don't i've forgotten that one is bad debt I lost all the money by one sweep. Why? I was not guided. It's not everything that glitters that is. When you have the Holy Ghost and you connect with him, he will guide you as a businessman. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 25, it says, there is a way that seems right unto a man. He says, but the end thereof, there are way of destruction, ways of death. Ways of death. You need to, the, listen, the Holy Ghost is not just there to be speaking in tongues, though. Is to give you wisdom and direction. To guide you. To guide you. This business that appears juicy, don't put your money there. Your body is reacting. No, it will eat. Don't put your money there. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of guidance. Beyond the understanding of the economy, of, of, of the market you know, the Holy Ghost knows better than that. Are you following what I'm saying? He knows better than that. So when you are connected to the Holy Ghost as a power source, he gives you wisdom, he gives you direction, he gives you understanding, he guides you. 
That's why you need him. You can never have the upper hand in life without the Holy Ghost. You can never. You can never. The Holy Ghost is the power from on high that takes men to high places. So you want to break through in life, thank God for all the Harvard principles, but get connected to the power source, to the Holy Ghost. So that he can give you wisdom, he can guide you, he can show you what to do. There is one investment that you will make that will turn your story around. That what you will get in your phone is not an alert, but an alarm. Are you following? You're getting a lot. Hey, 10,000. <laughs> but, but when the thing hits that beam, that one is not a lot, but what? A lamb. Something that will shake the account. You say, is it my money or bank make mistake? That is a lamb. That is what? That is what God is bringing your way. It takes the Holy Ghost to guide a man to the place of profiting in life. Isaiah 48, 17, 21. When you are guided by the Holy Ghost, you just flourish without resistance. Are you following what I'm saying? What are the hindrances to business breakthrough? Number one, in the fourth service, we talk about ungodly dealings, unrighteous dealings. In this service, we'll be looking at lack of financial intelligence. Lack of what? Financial intelligence. What do we mean by financial intelligence? That is mastering your money. Mastering your what? Money. That is a man who is financially intelligent. A man who knows how to master his money. Who knows what to invest in, what to do with his money. Who is not driven and moved by money? You see, the problem with most contractors, can I talk to contractors now? Is that they have not mastered money. You have just won a contract of 200 million and you, are, you have not finished the job. You just look at this is my profit and you are already spending the profit. You used to drive one Corolla. You say, no, they must know that I'm a big boy now. Men, they must know I've arrived. So you go and look for a jeep. And you start riding one. Whether you are living in one village before, you say, no, as a big boy, I must live in the city. You move to the city. First contract, major breakthrough of your life. You have already spent the profit before it materializes. You won't go far. There's a time of building up. Because money has wings. Money has what? Money has what? So the first thing you do is to build up. To do what? Build up. By reinvesting into something else as guided by the Lord. Not by spending. Not by what? That is a man with financial intelligence. Rise to your feet. In the third service, we'll look at something else. Lift up your hand and magnify the great God. I'd like you to bless the Lord this morning. We give you all the glory.
of the prodigal son was not because he collected his own inheritance. His problem was lack of financial intelligence. Because if it were to be wrong for him to have asked, the father would not have given him. Are you following what I'm saying? And you will remember when the elder brother was grumbling, the father said, but you never ask. So the challenge of the prodigal boy was not asking. It was lack of financial intelligence. Listen. Learn to build up, to stay up. Are you following what I'm saying? Learn how to build up, to stay up. There is a time when a particular level of popularity is bigger than your size. So to manage that phase of your life, build up. Do what? Build up. Keep building up. You may get a contract this month, assuming no other one comes in the next six months. Will your family, in the next two years, will your family begin to suffer? That's why you build up. By profitably investing. By profitably what? Can I talk to you, church? I hope you'll not be angry. I hope you won't think I'm telling you prophecy of doom. Assuming they sack you today, where will you go? Hello? Where will you... What do you have to start life with? That means you have not been financially intelligent. There are things God won't do for you that you have to do for yourself. Assuming you get to office on Monday and they give you, they say, Let's, sorry sir, your service is no longer needed. What have you prepared? Look, wake up to reality of life. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't deceive yourself. Can I talk to you? There is no employer that plans for your future. I hope you know that one. So, so the planning for your future is your business. There's no employer that pays you for your wife and your children. They only pay you, you alone. That is why when you have four children, six children, did they increase your salary? That means they are not paying you for your wife and for your children, but for you. So how do you manage your home and not leave problems for your children? Financial intelligence. So you sit down after this service and ask yourself, because if you don't talk to yourself, people will insult you. You see, I like Nirono. That means, I don't know how to translate that one. Or. It's not thinking. Are you following what I'm saying? He says, it's not thinking. So you sit down and think now so that you don't stink tomorrow. Because there's no continuing city in any place of work. If you say, I don't want to go, they will look at you. They say, you are tired. So they will retire you. They say, this man is tired. So we do what? We retire. You don't want to go. You say, I can still work. They say, no, you are tired. <laughs> so we retire you. Now, what do you go to do? Financial intelligence. So if there are things you need to cut down now, go and cut it down so that you can have a future. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I receive grace. Speak to the Lord. Lord, help me. Whatever adjustment I need to make, Lord, I receive grace. Lord, help me. I will not fail in life. I will not fail myself. I will not fail you. I will not fail my generation. Lord, I receive grace. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name. All is bowed, all eyes closed. There is a fountain that is flowing from Emmanuel's vein. That if anyone, sinner, backslider, will plunge into it, it will be made whole. I don't know who you are, but you can't manage life by yourself. You can't manage life by yourself. You can't walk the journey of life by yourself. 
Because there are forces in life that governs life beyond your human strength. That is why there is a place of refuge in God. I don't know who you are. You want to come under that refuge. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to give. This is not church. Plain church. This is a conscious walk with God. You want to say, Jesus, I come to you this morning. I want you to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. I'd like you to lift up your hands above your head. You are standing here this morning. You were once born again. But somewhere along the line, you are backslidden. You had gone back to the way of the world. You have gone back to your vomit. Nobody is condemning you. Nobody is condemning you. I don't have the power to do it. But you can be reconnected to the Savior. Like that prodigal son. Without God, you can't make it far. The Bible says righteousness is what exalts. It's a sin will ultimately bring a reproach. Wherever you are, you want to make it right with Jesus. Your hand lifted up. Pick your Bible, whatever you have, and walk up to the altar. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Just walk up to the altar. Wherever you are standing this morning, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. I want to help some individuals this morning. You can manage life. You can manage life. You can manage life. But you can run to the Savior. Thank God for that life. Wherever you are, you want to join this precious soul. Pick your Bible, whatever you brought to church. You want to say, Jesus, I hide in you. Where are you? Pick your Bible, whatever you brought to church, and come this way. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Born, born, born again. Praise God. We are waiting for you. There are people standing out there, inside and outside. You know your life is not right with Jesus. You have tried to make things work. It's not working. Born, born Jesus again. is calling you this Thank hour. I'm born again. Jesus is not at the door of your heart. I give him access. I will turn my to see my Jesus. Goodbye, Lord. Goodbye, Lord. I stay no longer with you. I stay no longer with you. My pleasure. I will rest up my life. 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 I will rest up Jesus is waiting. Can you say it? I'm not a mama. God has for the rest of my life. The greatest challenge in life is hypocrisy. Claiming to be who you are not. God cannot help an hypocrite. In fact, the Bible says the light of the hypocrite shall be put out. And there shall be darkness in his tabernacle. All is bowed, all eyes closed. There are people who ought to be standing here. Please, Jesus wants to help you. Jesus wants to help you. I know you are standing there, you are struggling. But Jesus is saying, I want to help you. You may have messed it up. And you don't expect people to think you have messed it up. But you know you have messed it up. Jesus is saying, come. Wherever you are, Pick your Bible now. Join us very quickly before we pray. We're waiting for you inside and outside of this auditorium. Jesus is waiting. 
Nobody's finding fault with you. Nobody's condemning you. We just want to put your hand in the hand of the Savior. Those who are out here, bow your head, close your eyes. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning just as I am. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I surrender to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Please, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. I feel a burden in my spirit. There's somebody you came out from a place that is wrong to be in church this morning. Jesus knows you. Jesus knows you. I don't know you, but Jesus knows you. You came out from a wrong place to church this morning. Jesus is saying, I want to help you. I want to give you a new beginning. If you are that individual, please all let bow your eyes close. We're not out here to pick forth, find forth with anybody. Please come. Please come. I kept hearing that in my spirit. First time, second time. I wanted to keep quiet over it. But the Holy Ghost is impressing upon my heart to say, whoever you are, come. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that your hand will rest upon these precious people. Wash away their sins. Be their Lord and their Savior. Let the grace that saved them today, let that same grace preserve them. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name. Please open your eyes. Go with an official here. Put your hands together for the Lord.